Hello everyone and welcome again to yet another Doc Talk. This Brain Tumor Day, that is 8th of June, we have Dr. Arun Saroha, Director and Head Neurosurgery at Max Hospital Gurgaon, joining us for today's session. Hello, good. Sir, as we all know, more than 1 million cases in a year in India suffer from brain tumor. So, I have a few questions for you. What is a brain tumor and which is the commonest brain tumor? Brain tumor is an abnormal growth of tissue in anywhere in the brain and it can compose of any kind of cells which may be the cover of the brain. It can be the main cells of the brain which is known as astrocytes. It can be coming from some blood vessels, it can be coming from some ependyma, it can be coming from various other blood vessels in the brain. So any kind of abnormal tissue or abnormal mass in the brain which is giving rise to a pressure symptom is known as brain tumor. Now there are various kinds of tumors, uh, there are about 150 types of brain tumors and uh, one of the commonest tumors is glioma. Uh, which uh, is about 30 to 40 percent in various studies. Uh, in our center, it's about 35 to 38 percent. Sir, we keep hearing that not all tumors are harmful. So, can you please tell us what are the types of brain tumors? So, uh, you can classify or uh, divide brain tumors on two categories. One, that there are primary brain tumors and there is secondary brain tumor. The primary brain tumors are the tumors which grow mainly or primarily in the brain tissue and there are secondary brain tumors which come from the other cancers in the body like a breast cancer or a bone tumor something uh, some other cancer in the body which travels as a group of cells or cells rest into the brain and then starts growing there. So uh, it is primary and secondary and sec the other classification is benign and malignant. Benign tumors are the tumors which grow where they are they do not spread in the surrounding tissue, they grow very slowly, they cause symptoms which are a uh, little late and they are milder symptoms and they are usually resectable. So benign tumors and there are malignant tumors. Malignant tumors are cancerous tumors, they usually do not spread to any other part of the body but they do grow, keep on coming back even after the surgery and cannot be controlled well in spite of chemotherapy and radiotherapy, they are known as malignant tumors. My next question to you sir is who is at the risk of getting a brain tumor? Is it more common in males or in females? So it's very difficult to say because uh, the prevalence becomes a question mark when the prevalence of a uh, disease is less than 1% of the population. And uh, yes, there are few tumors which have a propensity to be more in males and there are few others which have more in females. Similarly, there are few tumors which are more common in children and there are some which are common in adults and there are others which are more common in old age. As we all know that early intervention yields better outcomes. So is there a way to know the early signs and symptoms and are there any specific symptoms of brain tumor? Yeah, so this is a very uh, important question for um, common man uh, because there is no way that we can screen the patients for brain tumors per se. So we should look at the symptoms in a very specific and a serious manner instead of neglecting them. So headaches which are a particular kind of headache which goes on for longer time and it's, it has a different kind of a character. It can be in a form of epilepsy fit, it can be in a form of weakness in one half of the body or any part of the limb, it can be in the form of dimness of vision, it can be in the form of multiple repeated vomitings and it can be in the form of increased sleep also. So there are various, uh, when there are these kinds of varied symptoms which are related to the brain or the nervous system, we should always go to a neurologist and an, or a neurosurgeon when we have a symptom which is not getting treated by our uh, general practitioner. And that is when you will be screened or investigated by doing various investigations and then if that there is a possibility that if that is there, if the tumor is there, it would be detected and can be treated further. Can you tell us, sir, how is a brain tumor diagnosed? So, uh, one of the most common investigations available all over the world and all parts of the country is a CT scan. But CT scan is primarily used to treat, uh, detect and uh, treat head injuries. 
the ideal way to uh, diagnose a brain tumor is by doing an MRI and there is a specific uh, scan which is being done, a contrast enhanced MRI brain which will detect the brain tumor in the best possible manner. But there are other few more modified ways of uh, MRI and other scans which may add to the knowledge of a kind of brain tumor that it is. Sir, what are the available treatment options for a brain tumor? So, uh, if somebody is detected with a brain tumor, what are the few things that uh, a patient or a relative of a patient should do? Choose your doctor correctly because uh, it is very important to be uh, in hands of a clinician who understands the tumor and treats the tumor more frequently. Number two, it should be a center which has most of the facilities to either uh, diagnose or treat or manage uh, such tumors. Now, uh, these tumors are mainly managed initially uh, by uh, surgery and the surgery are minimally invasive microscopic surgeries mostly and they are available in all the most of the good centers specifically which are well equipped with uh, microscopes and high-end uh, uh, operating uh, devices like HUSA and uh, other things. Uh, so, number one is surgery. Number two, radiotherapy. So, the radiotherapy has also varied uh, ways the, uh, depending on the kind of uh, machines that he, uh, we use for radiotherapy, the results would depend on it. Thirdly, it would be radio surgery. The radio surgery is a kind of radiation which is given in a specific manner which acts like a surgery but it is done through radiation. So, it is known as radi radio surgery. Then there is a small role of uh, chemotherapy in brain tumors, not a big role like other cancers. So, then chemotherapy can come into the role after we have, we are done with radiotherapy and surgery and for those tumors which are not radio sensitive. The lastly, the new therapy which has come in is immunotherapy which is being used in few centers in particular kind of brain tumors. So, what is the recovery rate in brain tumor treatment? It is a complex uh, question to answer, I would put it uh, differently, uh, what are the tumours which can be treated permanently or cured? So there are very few, about 40 percent of the tumours are those which you would operate and they would be treated forever or if it may be followed by radiation and they do not have a recurrence or has a very low recurrence and the, the disease free survival may be more than 10 years in about uh, 40 percent of these patients. Most of the tumours are malignant tumours and they have a high recurrence rate and the radio sensitivity is not uh, very significant in such tumors and the chemotherapy role as I have told you is very minimal. So, in such patients the recurrence is high and uh, in more like I told you there is a tumor which is known as glioma in this there is a variety which is known as the high end glioblastoma multiforme. The recurrence rate in such patients is up to 90 percent and by 6 months the recurrence occurs. So, it becomes difficult for survival uh, and disease free survival in such patients. How do they select which hospital to go to? So, surely uh, there is a chance usually that when you select the doctor, it, the doctor has to be, if you select a good one, he has to be in a good center. But then as per me, you should also uh, focus on the kind of hospital that you choose because it is a very important uh, factor. So, when you choose a correct a center to go to or a correct hospital, what are the factors that it should have a good neurosurgery, neurology, neurointervention department because the, that is the kind of support that you need. Then uh, there, there has to be all the kinds of modern M, uh, equipments like MRI, PET, CT, etc. for all the evaluations possible. Then uh, the operation theater of that place should have a, a intraoperative MRI or a CT, it should have a stereo taxi, it should have uh, instruments like QSA, it should have high end microscopes or uh, uh, cautery for better results. So, these are the few things if you keep in mind you will always go to a correct center. Lastly, you cannot uh, go, you cannot perform great surgeries without great support of neuroanesthetist. A great neuroanesthesia support is very, very important in the recovery and during the anesthesia or during the surgery of the patients. Sir, what are the other techniques of treatment apart from surgery and radiation? Yeah, uh, so the mainstay is surgery and uh, the radiation that is radiotherapy, but there are few techniques if you use in conjunction with the uh, standard techniques then you get you get good outcomes and good results. These are 
if you have as I told you neuro intervention lab uh, where you can do a digital subtraction angiography and if you have to embolize the tumor because in large tumors and very vascular tumors if you do embolization and then you operate the outcomes are better it is better for the surgeon better for the patient to uh, undergo such uh, procedures. Then there is radio surgery. Radio surgery is uh, as I um, have mentioned before it is radiation but it is done in a way that it acts like a surgery. So, it can be gamma knife, it can be cyber knife, it can be X knife, it can be even proton beam nowadays which is coming uh, forth and these are the supportive treatments or the primary treatments in few of the brain tumors. Then there are few techniques if you use them in conjunction with your primary technique then it helps like if you use a stereotexy, a frameless stereotexy or a framed stereotexy along with your surgery or with your standard surgical technique it would help you to be in a more accurate position and a correct incision so that your results are better the patient would feel uh, the, the uh, chances of having an error is much less. Then if you have high end microscopes where we can use dye so that it defines the tumor very in a proper manner. So, you can remove the tumor completely and uh, for the best outcomes. Lastly, if you have an intraoperative CT scan or an MRI then it helps you to uh, be sure in low grade tumors when you are removing them and you are at the end of the surgery you can be really sure that whether you have removed it completely or not. Before we close the session sir. What would you say is the take home message of today's session? I would emphasize on only one thing that if you are symptomatic of the symptoms of uh, central nervous system mainly the headache or any other pressure symptoms like I told you dimness and vision or vomiting or weakness in any part of the body or epileptic fits. In such a situation you should not delay the diagnosis you should go to a trained person like a neurologist and a neurosurgeon and get yourself investigated and rule out the dreaded disease. If you have any questions related to brain tumors, please drop a comment in the comment section below. Thank you sir. Thank you.